Tyrannid sector was all but doomed. The hive ships of the Tyranids hung over each world, seeding the Hey, chat. How's it going? The Tyranids were ready to feast. But these worlds are also the recruiting ground for the Blood Ravens. A chapter of the Emperor's own space. Hey, don't be up. Are you related to Alex Louise Armstrong? Related to the fabulous man himself. Aurelia into a new orbit, encased the planet in ice, and swallowed it whole. For a thousand years, the warp held Aurelia in its terrible grip, depositing untold horrors across its surface. Now, planet Aurelia has returned. It should be a barren ball of ice. But a signal is coming from its surface. A blood raven signal. A call for help. Oh man, guys! We gotta help them! We gotta help! We gotta be the best helpful Boy Scouts. Commander, this is Gabriel Angelos. We have detected a Blood Raven's distress signal coming from somewhere nearby. If there are chapter brothers in need, provide support. But be wary of a trap. Angelos out. Our drop pods have scattered, Commander. Something is interfering with the navigation systems. Oh, didn't mean to do that. We should locate our other forces and regroup. Say it now before the Klepti. Let fly. We need to get past this wall to locate the other drop pods. Use your jump pack to get across. Please. Please. I need explosives. I am arrived in both chats. Hey. God. Be vigilant. Fine. We'll make do with what we have. Look alive, brothers. Fuck, I hate that this game has Guardsmen. randomized what goddamn drops. Here? Be vigilant. Hold your position, space marines. I said hold! Lower your weapon, guardsmen. We do not answer to you. Gun them down! Hey. What? I can clear those bunkers with explosives. Attacking them with standard weapons takes much more time. Well done. Chat, how, how are all of you doing today? No loyal guardsmen would ever fire on a space marine. I doubt these traitors were alone. More traitors ahead, and well armed. My scouts wear light armor, Commander, so we had best make use of available cover. Yes. Fuck that, I say, as we do this. Ready to jet back up. Commander. And come destroyed. It's doing okay. Hey, hey, 
build and such. That's fair. Be vigilant. I'm gonna be fucking grocery shopping tomorrow. Hell yeah! Fucking food. Speaking of food, I made I made chicken wraps tonight, and uh, I marinated the chicken. But this unpopulated glacier is an armed camp. Marinated the chicken. Did this world not just emerge from the warp? If so, someone else got here first. Traitor guards. Just when I was starting to respect them. Hate them if you will, but do not underestimate them. I marinated chicken with hickory barbecue sauce, uh, pepper, seasoning salt, and basil. Here they come. Get ready to fire. Traitors. Quickly, while Tarkas has their attention, we should engage them at extreme range and focus our fire. Thanks, Commander. Our drop pod took anti-air fire on final approach. Only I made it out, and just barely. And still, you made yourself a target to break that ambush. What would the Codex say about <laughs> that? The tactical squad shall draw the enemy's fire, thus allowing the Devastator squad to attack from a position of strength. Ha! That it does. This whole situation looks like a trap, but there is still a distress signal transmitting from somewhere nearby. We had best locate its source quickly. Finally, some fucking explosives. Oh my god! I'm like, this is a very bunker rich environment, and I need to, like, be able to blow those up. If I don't have explosives, I can't do that. All right, touch it. Standard Imperial Locator Relay. Transmitting a generic distress signal using Blood Raven's codes. Hmm. Just enough to lure us in. Coordinates 9.6 by 11.12. Launch barrage! Artillery, clear the area. Not just holding for grenades. Yeah, no, grenades are decent. But uh, I'd rather I'd rather buy uh, satchel charges. Thanks. Grenades are good for clearing out uh, massive groups of enemies in this game. We should extract and bomb this ice pile from orbit. No, we need to secure an approach before we can launch an extraction. Only logic engines can track and target drop pods. Those systems depend on a broadcast array. Then let us act like space marines. Find the array and destroy it. Hold on, I'm checking this. I'm checking this out. Hold on.
the fuck is this comment, dude? Hey T-Com, how you doing? All right. Yeah, they found the video. Okay. They're fucking yapping in the comments. Holy shit. Okay. Okay. It's lazy how they introduced female custodies. So you mean how they did everything else when it came to 40k hold on chat hold on hold the fuck on i'm gonna bring us back to painting there we go one sec okay let's see here let's see here you you okay how about uh how about you? Okay, uh... Sorry, grabbing stuff! Yeah, you'll help too. Introduced with no fucking further backstory or lore until 20 goddamn 16. Introduced with no backstory or lore at all. Completely fine with it. 2018. End of fucking 9th edition. Half the fucking units in this book. 2020 got 2020 goddamn 3. Imperial Knights didn't fucking exist. Randomly introduced. You know what this tells me, chat? You know what this tells me? Much like a certain famous author and mangaka named Akira Toriyama, 40k writes by the seam of their goddamn pants. They write the lore first, then they print the models. That has always been how it has been since 40K was made. Story first, model second. Yes, they do say they're a model company. But guess what? They gotta say shit's there to fucking make it. It is fucking pathetic. Oh, well, it's lazy. It's all lazy. Are you kidding me? Fucking, you know what else is lazy? When every other story adds something into it. But guess what? By that logic, everything's fucking lazy. Dead space. Oh, well, the new suits that have the fucking helmets that fold out, that's lazy writing. 
No, that's just a fact in the universe. Those helmets exist. Oh, they retconned it. Where? Every bit of fucking evidence these tools tried to show, they always cut off everything else. Don't show the full page. I wonder why. Oh, the 8th edition Custodes Codex says, Sons of Nobles. And then you look at the next goddamn paragraph, and it says, anyone else that is exceptional. And man, I wonder why the Emperor would take the sons of his rivals to make into his brainwashed bodyguards. Hmm. I wonder why that point was made very clear along with other exceptional individuals. Hmm, hmm. Notice that they never said the gender of those exceptional individuals, and that was done on purpose. My fucking god. This is a great opportunity for slaughter. Oh, Shadow, thanks for the raid. Forty K has always done this from the very fucking beginning. They have always introduced new shit right out of goddamn nowhere. Necrons and Tau, fucking right the hell out of nowhere. Dark Eldar, right the fuck out of nowhere. It's mundane as shit at this point. Fucking GW adds a new thing. Every day ending in Y. I see you want to rap about this. Is the status quo we should all be used to? It's 40k. It's fucking retcon central in this goddamn universe. Fucking Jesus Christ. It is not new that this happens. But they act like it fucking is the end of the world every goddamn time. And they get so fucking bent out of shape over it. Oh, but the cannon is concrete. No, it's not. You know why the cannon's not concrete? The Horus Heresy. This massive 53 book series basically took the entirety of what we knew about the Imperium and fucking kicked it out the door. It is not that fucking hard to see that. It is not. You guys are getting me standing for this one. Fuck you. I want everyone to understand this. Warhammer 40k has never been concrete with anything that has been written inside of it. Nothing will ever stay the same within Warhammer 40k. One, because the real world reason is it's a fucking tabletop game that needs to update itself to make more models that people will buy. That is the cynical, real-world reason why they add shit. Why do we add? Why do we add Imperial Knights? Oh, because people like giant robots. So why don't we make giant robots? Chaos Knights. People like giant robots with spikes on them. Put them in the game. Why do we have Tau? Because people like anime. God damn it. Why do, people, why do we have Necrons? Some fuckhead liked Terminator. That's the reason why your Necrons exist. Some fuckhead liked Terminator. Bing, bang, boom. And you know how every time they've introduced anything new into Warhammer? It's just fucking there, chat. It's just there. Just like with Star Wars, the Naboo Starfighter didn't need a goddamn fucking manifesto of why it exists. Oh, this is the Starfighter that the Naboo use. It's yellow. We didn't need a goddamn manifesto for why the California class exists in fucking Star Trek. Look, 
It's a ship. It's a bit smaller. Bing, bang, boom. It exists. You have to introduce the fucking thing, and then you can write stories about it. It is not that fucking hard to see, but goddamn do these fucking idiots, these fucking weirdos, like to just forget that for one reason or another. And you know what's even funnier? When they're saying, cite the source at the company that makes the IP, that makes the stories, that makes the game. Cite your sources, creator of thing. Creator of thing, go fuck yourself. It's canon. Like, what? You're going to argue with that? Bruh. The company said a thing. It's canon now. Suck it up, princess. And then someone said, oh, well, Bethesda listened to the fans when they made a mistake about one of the moons. Oh, you mean one of the moons from a video game that who the fuck cares? Okay, cool. They changed the name of the moon back to what it was. Congrats! No one cares. And that's the thing here. I want everyone to understand something about this whole thing. This whole fucking thing that has gotten a lot of people, a lot of people... Underwear riding up their asses. I want people to understand something. Get okay, closer for this one. No one fucking cared. You know what happened? I'm going to explain something that happened. 40K dropped that there are female custodies in the new custodies book. Most people went, okay, cool. I'll play custodies. I play marines. I played Imperial Guard. I played Orcs. Whatever. Cool though. Good for you. Custodies players that actually play the fucking game. Sick. I have more creative option. Awesome. Other people like me going, Woo! Golden Mines! Because thick girls are hot. I'm sorry. That has been the majority of this. Which is good. But then there is the weirdos who weirdly went anti-Semitic, sexist, and racist about this over a fictional fucking game. Let me get this straight. The fact that vaginas got into power armor made your mask fall off. What the fuck is wrong with you? Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart. Like, what? I am watching grown men slam their faces in puddles and scream, I'm drowning. That is what this is like. That is what this is. I'm drowning in a puddle. It is so inconsequential. It is so fucking small. And it's been here for a fucking while now. Like, holy shit. No one fucking noticed when in Echoes of Eternity, you know, Horus Heresy, Fucking Siege of Terra, where they're preparing for the assault, Sanguinius basically says, I didn't even recognize the Custodes at first. I just saw the Emperor's Talons, both men and women, step off the golden ship. They are that powerful? And note, the Sisters of Silence were completely obliterated at this point. 
and Aaron Densky Bowden, the author of the damn book, confirmed it. This has been here for a long while now. Actually, when did Echoes of Eternity come out? Hold on. Hold on. Let me look at this. Echoes of Eternity. This has been a thing for two goddamn years. Fucking 2022. We're in 2020 goddamn four. This has been a thing for two years. Female custodies have existed for two years. There's already precedent. And guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain something to you. Do we need to know the name of every goddamn stormtrooper in Star Wars? How about every fucking Klingon that passes by your gaze? Do you need to know their names? No? Okay, how about this? Uh, do you need to know every goddamn name of every UNSC Marine you run past in Halo? No! That's insane! Are you fucking kidding me? The reason why there hasn't been any real character for the Custodes is because, one, they're faceless. They're fucking atomic, they're fucking robots, essentially. Brainwashed robots with zero personality hiding in the background near a fucking corpse most of the time. And any time they did appear in the Horus Heresy, they were quiet, didn't speak, or one person was speaking for them. There is precedent to this. It has been here for forever. It has been set up. So you can't get mad when they do it. The Primaris Marines were set up from Horus Heresy. Everyone fucking lost their shit when Primaris came out. I know because I did too. But then, you know, you actually sit here, you read the damn books, and guess what? You tend to learn a fucking lot. I know I said this was a chill stream. I apologize. I am just loud. And I know a lot of those bastards commenting in my fucking YouTube right now. They're not going to watch this stream. They're not even going to come interact. No, nah, but here's the thing. You want to know something about custodians? They don't have fucking names, most of them. They earn their names. And they're usually just given fucking stupid words for their names. Trajan Valoris had to fucking earn that name. And guess what? He's only got two words. He got two. Trajan Valoris is a fucking basic bitch. There are custodies with a hundred words for their name. And they sounded off to the entire group when introducing themselves. You're going to sit there for an hour and listen to somebody rattle off a munchkin baskis lasagna continuing on with the other 97 words are you fucking kidding me and then there's the group the grifters the people that saw controversy and slid on in on their sweaty ball sacks because they don't leave their fucking computer because they're sad and basically went, aha, aha, the for the has gone work, they're obviously going broke. <laughs> Bud, you don't even know what a fucking space marine is. I already just learned that someone I was arguing with today thought custodies were Grey Knights. What the fuck is a Grey Knight? 
Oh, well, you see, they're demon-hunting space marines that are basically the KGB of the 40K universe and are completely different from the Custodes. I.e., the Custodes see them and think they're mutinous freaks that need to be expunged. But they can't because Daddy didn't tell them that they could. Yet. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, my friends, this is the vengeful spirit, this book, right here, say good luck, Horace is on the cover, vengeful spirit, made by Graham McNeil, one of the fucking founding writers of GW, along with Dan Abnett and Aaron Dembski Bowden. I.e., he's got a little bit of fucking experience under his belt. Close to fucking 30 years. Well, past 30 years, actually. Ventral Spirit is the book where Horace goes to a planet that his dad visited a long time ago to get the same power that the Emperor has. You want to know what we find out in that book? Space Marines are magic. The Emperor stole power from the gods, and Space Marines, along with Custodes, are magic. That's it. Space Marines and Custodes are magic. They were made from warp stuff. The organs, everything else, warp stuff. The Gene Seed, warp stuff. Second Heart, warp stuff. Four Lungs, heart, warp stuff. I.e., there's no science behind it. There's no logic or reason behind it. Much like how there's no logic and reason for any of 40K. There's not. It has never been science fiction. It has been fantasy. <clears throat> yes, it's in space. Cool. What else it got going for it? That science fiction. We travel through hell! We travel through hell! We rip open fucking space vaginas and go through the warp. We, we practically just travel along the fucking hell highway, travel along it, and hope to God that a demon doesn't ram a sword through our goddamn stomach. You want to tell me where any of that is real? Where any of that is science? Please explain to me where a corn demon is science. It doesn't make logical sense. It's not supposed to. Everyone in the universe goes, this doesn't make logical fucking sense. I just watched a marine get fucking torn in half. By a goddamn fat guy with boils with a rusty knife. Fucking torn in half. It doesn't matter if you have proof of one book saying one thing. You know why? You know why? Because these two books say incredibly different things. Every fucking book in Warhammer 40k, from start to finish, has said completely different things. One book says that space marines are about 12 feet tall, another book says they're about 7. One book has the Inquisition as the good guys. The next one has them as the bad guys. <clears throat> fucking Vrax. This fucking bastion of what a lot of these people know about 40k. Guess what, kids? That was retconned three times. Three goddamn times.
Typhus Cain, Hero of the Imperium. All of his audiobooks have been reworked to be from the perspective of his girlfriend correcting his memoirs. That's a fucking retcon. The Rogaldorn tank. That brand new fucking giant ass tank that the Imperium got? Never existed. Never mentioned once in any of these books. GW just threw it on the fucking rack and said, it's always been there. Always has been. No complaints there. None whatsoever. Didn't need a book. Didn't need something to justify its existence. It's just there. No one complained. Well, some people complained about the model not having a bottom because some of the model prints were actually fucking fucked up. And so fucking we just made jokes saying that the Imperial Guard running the Rogaldorn tank are fucking Fred Flintstone and fucking, uh, what's his name? Barney. And they're just fucking Flintstone running that tank across the battlefield because it's absolutely goddamn hilarious. And you want to know something? The Bastion of 40k, the Space Marines, have seen their fair share of retcons throughout the years. <clears throat> when they were introduced in Warhammer Rogue Trader, Space Marines were not the glorious warrior monks. They're not these fucking nice debt to society that fight for the imperium no they are barely contained psychotic murderers given organs that make them fucking crazy and go and rip the heads off of rebels that is how they started out and then guess what with times a changing they retcon that lore now, they're warrior monks independent of the Imperium structure. Okay, why are they independent of the Imperium structure? Okay, well, they're not actually independent of the Marine structure. They're actually, like, they still oh, adhere to the overall command structure. Why? Retconned again. The Primarchs. Primarchs didn't exist. The World Eaters Legion didn't exist. Night Lords didn't exist. Ultramarines didn't exist. In fact, the Ultramarines were a sub chapter. You know who did exist, though? You know which chapter, which Legion did exist before the Ultramarines, before the World Eaters, before those guys? <laughs> the Rainbow Warriors? Yeah, the Rainbow Warriors. Who the fuck are they? Well, they were a legion. They had a rainbow on their forehead. They were the gayest marines around. <laughs> the marines were the gayest thing around. And then here comes second edition retconning all that away guys we didn't even have fucking primarchs they got retconned in Horus wasn't a primarch he was just a general and then he was made into the emperor's son and then he was made into a primarch i.e. 40k has been retconning shit since its fucking inception. We need the gay marines back. You got them with the Dark Angels! They're nothing but that! They're nothing but a closet allegory! Lionel Johnson was a Catholic poet who was a well-known closeted gay who hated himself. And the shame of the Dark Angels is something so bad that no one else can know. Man, 
It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. This has how it's always been. And at this point, I'm not talking to the people that are losing their shit over this. I'm not talking to them. The people I'm trying to reach out to and to show that 40K is this way, it's just the way it is, is everyone else. Everyone else that could potentially fall into these groups. That could fall into this blind hatred. This anger. This unjustified drowning in a puddle. <clears throat> 40k makes no goddamn sense and that's fine. If you ended up in Warhammer Universe and would choose one faction to ignore ignore you which one would you choose uh easy i would choose fabius bile to ignore me i want nothing to do with him that man that man <sighs> we can make a lot of funny jokes but the man is fucked holy shit creations of bile no thanks <clears throat> but i want people to understand when they come into 40k the world is their oyster, essentially. The universe makes no sense. The universe is not intended to make sense. Facts and logic go out the window. Some characters stay the same, some of them don't. Kato Sicarius went from a grizzled war veteran who gave no flying fucks at all to... I am Kato Sicarius, and I shall be the chapter master of the Imperium's Ultramarines! Back to, God damn it, I fucking hate everybody. I'm gonna blow the next priest head off I see who dares talk to me in such a way. He went from grizzled veteran to pompous asshole to scarred emotional being. Would you join the Salamanders chapter? Uh, they're so boring. They're so boring. What, we just hang out in the fucking forge all day and we hammer away at stuff, not talking about anything interesting? Look, I'm sorry. Fucking Salamander's books are so goddamn boring because for some fucking reason in 30K they're written like they're in 40K. And I just can't be bothered. Like, it's, it's a good writing when it's Vulcan versus fucking Conrad Kurz, because Vulcan basically says, yeah, no, you're fucking edgelord Batman, and you're fucking pathetic. As, like, he's being tortured, and Conrad can't handle it. Oh, I'll throw my guy, I'll throw my boy goddamn Kato Sicarius under the fucking bus. You kidding me? I'll fucking throw him under the bus. You don't get better by not being criticized. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is it the same way in fantasy? Oh, God, yes! What the fuck do you think AOS was? <laughs> Warhammer Fantasy retconned the end of the world. Three goddamn times. The first one, humanity won. Great job. <laughs> Second time, they kind of just ended because Grimgor Ironhide came up and kicked Archeon in the dick and left. And then the third time was, hey, let's fucking end the world and get rid of fantasy. Because fuck, no one's buying anything. And guess what? Rats blew up the moon, the death god rose, and Archeon won. Archeon got what he wanted. After learning that his dad was Bellacor, the fucking first demon prince of chaos, who is also in 40k, by the way. 
Oh, hey, did you know that Fantasy in 40K used to be late? That's a retcon, too. Or that 40K was a globe inside a wizard's room within the fantasy world? That's a goddamn retcon. This shit happens all the goddamn time. But that's what is going to happen with a series, with a universe that has been around for close to goddamn 40 years. Okay? 40 years is not young. I am fucking half that. I am 20 goddamn six. 40K this year is 37 goddamn years old. I am a decade and one year behind it. And do you think I remain stagnant in my 26 years of life? No! It is not that hard to understand. Do you have to like everything that is added into Warhammer 40k? No one has said that, and no one is ever going to say that, unless you're a fucking creep, or a weirdo. You don't have to like everything. Okay? No one is forcing you to buy anything. You don't have to buy it if you don't want it. Female custodies. You don't have to have them. You don't have to buy them. Revolutionary idea. You don't have... I don't have to buy goddamn land speeders. I fucking hate them. They're too weak. They don't hit as hard as I want them to. I don't want them. Fuck it. I don't want to play custodies because they're just more powerful space marines with less ranged combat. Cool. I don't want to play them. I'm happy for the custodies players that get what they want, but I don't care. I'm not playing them. I love that we got female custodians and don't care if others don't like it. To me, if she's badass, that she got chosen by the emperor. Exactly. They're badass if they got picked by the guys who got picked by the Emperor. And I gotta say something else here. To anyone saying, oh, well, we should have had one female custodian earn the position. We don't even get that with the other fuckheads. Trajan Valoris, he's just there. Never had to learn how he earned the fucking position of Captain General. He's just fucking there. Every other custodian in the book, they're just fucking there. Never had to earn shit. They are just custodies. Why Why do we have to earn everything? Why can't we just have characters be the characters and be in the army? What the fuck? Why does every goddamn book need to be an origin story? Fucking Kyphus Kane books that just drop you in the middle of what he's doing. You don't even learn Kyphus Kane's fucking origins. Until his second goddamn book. And even then, he just throws it away and says, Oh, I don't know. I think my parents were killed by croup or something. And then I was just thrown into the Scala Progenium. Where I learned to survive. And here I am now. And I fucking hate my life. Then the next thing that I want to point out here. Female custodies invalidate Sisters of Silence and Sisters of Battle. How? How? Explain to me how Muscle Girl makes other girls not exist or irrelevant. Please explain this to me. Because when we're shown a custodies, we are told these fuckers, for every 100 marines, there's one custodies. 
The Custodes process is a thousand times more expensive and more costly to make one. How does that make any of the Sisters of Silence or Sisters of Battle irrelevant to the conversation? This is just like saying, oh, well, Spartan 4s make ODSTs irrelevant. No, they don't. There's only 300 goddamn Spartan 4s. And each one was just as expensive as a Spartan fucking 2. So, tell me, in a war economy, what are you going to do? You're going to go bankrupt making more of those fucking Spartan 4s? Or are you going to give that fuckhead who we basically put through harsher training and basically put in a fucking metal casket a fucking gun, a helmet with some decent technology, and then drop them down to the jungle saying, good luck, kid. They're going to go with the cheaper one. It is. And as well, the Sisters of Battle don't defend the Emperor. They don't? What does a Sister of Battle do? They defend Shrine World, they go on Crusade, and they burn heretics. What does the Custodes do? Oh, well, until recently, they were having their fists up their goddamn self-righteous assholes. It took Gullyman breaking down the door and screaming at them, Get the fuck out there! You worthless pieces of shit! Along with fucking Trajan Valoris coming back and going, Yeah, no, I agree with this kid. We need to get off our asses. Don't talk to my men that way. I'll talk to them however I damn well please, you fucking munchkin. Next, how does this invalidate the Sisters of Silence? The Sisters of Goddamn Silence. You know, the psychic blanks who basically are there to support the Custodes because the Custodes are notoriously not psychers who basically really struggle against demons and in fucking the Emperor's own book, uh, uh, the Custodes were so fucking happy to have them there because, oh God, they make fighting demons so much easier. Holy shit, dude. They're there as a ward against psychers and demons because they're blanks. That's their unique trait. Them being women is irrelevant at this point. The Sisters of Silence are there to help, to be a support unit. That is how they have always been written. Their existence is not invalidated because they still have a fucking job to do. I.e., stand there and shoot at the fucking demons while their other ability, which is an aura of effect, eat away at demons and psychers and cancel it out. What is happening? We're talking 40k retcons! Having one, having girls within the Custodes does not invalidate the other girls. It doesn't make them lesser. It doesn't make them pathetic or invalidate their entire fucking existence. Well, then why don't we just have Misters of Battle then, huh? Who's saying you can't? Who's saying you fucking can't? I'm not saying you can't. But why are you only bringing that up now? Why haven't you already done it? Well, why don't we have Mistress of Silence? I don't know. Why haven't we? Just like how we haven't had female custodies. Why haven't we? They think they're doing something here. But then I just point out to them, cool, why haven't you done it? Oh, well, the lore, said, the lore already said that female custodies could exist. I don't know why you're still on this. Like, at fucking all. 
You're still drowning in that puddle, dude. Like, honestly. God damn. Pick your fucking head up already. I am, I am handing you the fucking keys to the city. I'm saying do it. And you won't do it. Or females face me. Like, oh, what? <laughs> Work magic! That's why! <laughs> you know why female custodians were not talked about since their introduction into the lore in general from 2011? Because some fucking model guy basically said, don't write women custodies. Because the models are already done. And it's expensive to go back. But now that they're printing new custodies models, hey, guess what? Tits and golden armor. And everybody was sitting pretty. And then there's people saying, don't bring politics into the game. 40k is inherently a political game. War is political, guys. The War of um, uh, Battle of Taros was a inspiration from the Gulf War. Bad Dab War is how a fascist government can't get its shit together and inherently causes its own fucking problems from inner corruption. Servants of the Throne, a book about a custodies and a sister of silence working together to uproot a fucking cult within the fucking High Lords of Terra because of their conservative ideology corrupting the system because they were hardline staunch conservatives? Yeah, no, I think that's pretty political. 40K has always had politics in it. It's always been a satirization of them. They literally made fun of goddamn PETA. Like, what else do you want from them? And also, women and people are not inherently political? Being gay does not make you political. Being trans does not make you political. That is just your state of being. Being a woman does not make you political. But thanks anyway for telling us that women are woke, so that way we can have 50% of the population on our side. Thanks for that, you fucking losers. Wait, when did they make fun of PETA? There's a short story from one of the fucking books where a group of animal activists basically scream from the top of their lungs that these uh, fuzzy animals needed to be protected. When everyone knew that these fuzzy animals were an invasive species, they were destructive to any planet you put them on, and they would kill you on sight. They stole the ship, the Inquisition found it a year later, and everyone was dead. And the animals had repopulated. They then sent that ship into the sun, lapping their asses off. And the writer said, no, that was clearly a dig at fucking PETA. I don't know, guys, I think you're going to listen to the fucking people that write the stories rather than some jackass on YouTube who only learned about 40k to grip. Just saying. How do you remember all this stuff? I don't know! <laughs> I don't fucking know! I genuinely don't know how I remember any of this shit. I can remember Halo lore, I can remember 40k lore, I can remember lore from Gears of War, fucking Mega Man lore is all tucked away safe in here, but goddamn if I can't learn how to do my taxes. I'd pay someone to do that for me. God, I'm weird. <laughs> and again... Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I understand to a lot of people that they do like concrete rules within a universe. Fullmetal Alchemist works that way, i.e. equivalent exchange. 
or at least the new theory was by the end of that series, we give one, we get two. But the rules were set for the whole series. The only thing that upset that rule set was the Philosopher's Stone, but even then, that had its own rules too. But you want to know the difference between Full Metal Alchemist and Warhammer 40k? Full Metal Alchemist said that's the rules from the start and end. 40k made no such statement. They never said that. They said, we'll do what we want when we want. We want giant robots? We got giant robots. We got anime mechs? We got anime mechs. We got nuns and bolter bitches in power armor? Oh, buddy, you damn well best believe it. You want an uncomfortable set? You want an uncomfortable scene where a guy basically says, Yeah, no, I'd still tap that ass, even though it's half gene stealer. I'd tap that ass. You fucking got it, but except now you don't, because that was retconned out of the entire fucking story, with the entire opening of that book now being, yeah, no, I have no idea where this came from, I just found it in the fucking back rooms, and for some fucking reason, someone decided to write it down, and someone handed it to me to basically, basically figure out if this shit actually happened, I could say for certain that this is the ramblings of a goddamn madman, this is to be ignored, unless you are that fucking curious, buyers beware. That was one of the first 40k books. <laughs> Who knows, Ian? It might be my next movie. <laughs> but again, to everyone that is interested in Warhammer 40k, or has a passing knowledge of it, or is already in 40k, but is just confused as to why retcons happen, they happen because, one, real-world game that needs to sell models and keep updating the model line so they'll keep fucking making whatever the hell they want. Two, they have already stated since the Rogue Trader days that everything, everything is canon and everything isn't canon. I.e., believe whatever the fuck you want to believe. It's a sandbox for you to have fun in. The universe has no rules. You know how we know this? The warp nullifies all rules. It is the realm of dreams and madness. It can do whatever the fuck it wants. Fucking orcs. Orcs. Everyone knows the orcs from 40k. They scream real loud. Reality bends to what they want it to be. Space Marine chapters, regardless of who they were, are not actively fucking categorized or kept track of. Five chapters popped up with the same name, heraldry, and symbols, each with the same culture. And then they were told to knock it the fuck off. <laughs> One chapter has rock skin. One chapter has dragon fucking bones coming out of their goddamn wrists like fucking Logan. One chapter set themselves ablaze. One chapter's the KGB. One chapter is Nazis. Red Scorpions, I'm fucking looking at you. God damn it, we gotta have a chat about that one day. Imperial Guard regiments. Some regiments have spears or fucking black powder guns. Other regiments are fucking from Cyberpunk 2077. Like, god damn! Because this might help. Holy shit! Uh, that's, that's, uh... 40% of the way to the goal? That, 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 that's 40% of the way to the goal? Woo! One Whoa. bit to society later. Thanks, Aramis. Beautiful bastard. Love you. There's Eldar Shrines that we don't know about. There's Dark Eldar Cabalites that we don't know about. A Custodes with Tits. 
Really? That's where you're going to draw the line? You're going to draw the line at the custodian with ticks here? I thought you'd be fucking celebrating that. But no. You're not celebrating it. You're bitching about it on Twitter. You know what's going to happen? After this week goes away, all this won't matter. It won't. Those who want to leave have already left. Good riddance. Don't let the door hit. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Actually, do because it'd be funny. If you're that bent out of shape over ticks and armor, all this is gonna blow away after a week. Everybody's gonna go back to doing what they're doing. No one cares. No one outside 40K cares, people within 40K. If they do care, they're probably a Custodes player and they're psyched about it. No one gives a shit. And that's fine. Because guess what, guys? People exist. Women exist. Okay? Gays exist, trans people exist, people exist. No one is wiping the slate clean. Having female custodies does not mean the male custodies just stop existing. That's not what that's not what's happening here. Females one group of females does not invalidate another. Because it's normal. It's normal to have women in our society. This is not a fucking hill to die on. This is just common fucking sense. People exist, whether they be real or fictional. They all exist one way or the other. You cannot tell me to my face that women don't exist or don't deserve to be in those spaces or invalidate someone else. Are you fucking kidding me? By that logic, why do we even have space marines? Why do we even have the Imperial Guard? Why do we have the Mechanicus? We have custodies, dude. Why do we need them? Women don't exist. <laughs> exist we're all just blobs blobs in this grand joke of the universe <laughs> oh my god <laughs> warhammer is a fucking fantasy game where we gather around a table with armies with background lore to fight each other. It doesn't matter if your custodies has tits or the demon has a massive cock. None of that matters. It is just a simple background event to give us something to fight over. And everyone's the bad guy. Everyone's a dick. We are all playing the evil factions so that we don't feel bad when our models get blown off the table. Because some people who played war games didn't like that Nazis were a playable faction. Hi, Bolt Action. I don't know how you're doing lately. Sisters of Battles, you mean the Brothers in Arms? The gayest faction? <laughs> oh my god.
And at the end of the day, I'm coming back to sit down. Coming back. Coming back to sit down. Ugh. At the end of the day. It's a fucking game. The story is just there as background to give you and your friends an excuse to fight. All those big lore books, War of the Spider, uh, Faith and Fury, Siege of Vrax, Taros Campaign, 13th Black Crusade, they are all backgrounds to give you guys fun missions to fight in. Yeah, welcome to the cynical part of Warhammer 40k. Hi, Bob. Welcome to the cynical part about Warhammer 40k. All the shit that's written is basically to give you a place to fight over. That is basically it. Siege of Vrax was background for you to have a place to fight in. Taros campaign, same thing. War of the Spider. Oh, your factions that fought in this, i.e. Custodes, Death Guard, Assassins, uh, Creations of Bile. Place to fight in. You know why the lore doesn't matter? Why it never mattered? Because if there's no place to fight in, then you wouldn't have a fucking game. If everything was concrete, or happened the way that it happened, you wouldn't have a game. Nah, you, you have to follow the lore, absolutely. There was only a battle here. Well, that's fucking boring. You mean I have to play out how everything happened in the books? Son of a bitch! Creations of Bill. Best faction. <laughs> you know how fucking boring it would be watching this Siege of Rax be played out the way that it played out? It took 27 goddamn years! Are you fucking kidding me? And you're supposed to memorize every fucking thing that happened? No, thank you. Everything. From the smallest guardsman to the largest warlord titan. 40k is a sandbox for us to have fun in. For a company to sell models. Along with background lore of characters within the story. Within the universe. The sandbox. That's the way it is. Because that's the way it was made. It was meant to sell plastic. And that's what they're going to do. And they decided that some plastic has tits. Because guess what? Regardless of what you think, tits do sell. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, obviously. That goes without saying. And yeah, it does bug me. It does bug me. Am I upset at these people? Yeah, of course I am. I am upset. You know why? Because when people look at the 40k community, they see a bunch of fucking children 
losing their goddamn minds. Posting fucking sexist takes. Having a meltdown on a public forum. You know what happens when a grown man starts breaking down in public? Are you fucking kidding me? People don't just, like, start screaming and hollering about what the man's doing. They're wondering if he's okay. Mentally and emotionally. They're not concerned over the fucking late golden girl in booby armor. They're concerned about the guy who's fucking drowning in a puddle. And then they back off because he starts saying anti-Semitic shit. And then go, please, put your face back in the puddle. For God's sakes. Or go see a therapist. They don't give a shit about the women custodies. They give a shit about the weirdos having a fucking meltdown. And it's fucking pathetic. It is sad to see this coming from the Warhammer 40k community. And to those that left, good fucking riddance. Holy shit. I'd hate to fucking see what you're like in public. If you get this bent out of shape over fucking words on a piece of paper that's not even fucking affecting you in any way, shape, or form, holy shit! I've seen five-year-olds who fucking handle getting a cookie taken away from them better than these people. And yeah, it upsets me. It upsets me that people are seeing this. Seeing this horrible shit. Seeing fucking grown-ass adults within the 40k community or orbiting around it having a fucking meltdown. Because guess what? That's not the 40k community. That's a bunch of fucking losers on Twitter having a meltdown. But people see that and associate that with 40k. Just like how everyone associated the Steven Universe fandom with all those fucking losers that sent that girl death threats for how she drew fucking Rose Quartz. They're seeing people be anti-fucking Semitic. And then I get lumped in with that. People that I know get lumped in with that. I have to basically sit there and fucking take it from everyone else around me, because I'm a 40k fan, and guess what? Some fucking weirdo who worships the losers of World War II had a fucking meltdown at them before. Yeah, so allow me to be just a tiny bit fucking upset that I have to sit there and go, yep, yep, I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I promise the entirety of the 40k community is not like that. I promise it's not. That's basically every fucking time. I have to sit there and listen to that. So yeah, I'm a little fucking tired about it. Because a bunch of grown ass men who either are a part of 40k because of YouTube and memes or are just fucking shameless grifters who have lost relevance and are basically trying not to, you know, because they're so fucking pathetic, because their grift has failed, that they have to make everyone else's lives miserable. That's it. And it's sad. It is genuinely sad to see this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get heavy here for a moment. Because you know what? You want to know something? I have said this before and I will say it again. I used to fucking be that way. I used to be that miserable fucking pond scum. I used to think like they did. I used to speak like they did. I used to just basically do what they did. I had a fucking...
fucking meltdown whenever something happened in Star Wars. Yeah. It's why their shit doesn't work on me. Because I know the fucking game. I know what they're doing. They're sad and they're hurting. Because they're shit in their lives and they're taking it out on everyone else because they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't want to look weak, but guess what? It's okay to be weak. It's okay to admit that you're fucked. It's okay to admit that your life kind of fucking sucks in some ways. It's good in others, sucks in others. But the difference between me and these people, I chose to get help, I chose to be better, I chose to actually reflect and look inward and see that, oh, maybe Ray from Star Wars wasn't the problem. Maybe I was, because I'm fucking stressing out over a fictional character that doesn't exist. Maybe my trauma in life has done something to me to make me hostile and jaded. And maybe I should address the trauma instead of, you know, lashing out. All their arguments, every fucking argument, they don't have any. You know why? Because I know that they don't. Because I used to say the same shit that they did. I didn't have an argument. They don't have an argument. Anytime someone hit me back, I had nothing. I just resorted to insults. That's all they got. Literally. And then I grew up. And then I got therapy. I'm still going to therapy. Because guess what? Trauma doesn't go away with one session of therapy. And yeah, is it a little bit cynical to pay someone to listen to your problems? When you look at it like that, yeah, it sounds fucking cynical. But then you add in the little context of they listen and they help. You pay them to listen and help you. And help does not mean coddling your balls. It means sitting in that uncomfortable feeling, sitting in that uncomfortable space, and addressing those problems in a very uncomfortable way. Because guess what, guys? No one likes to talk about their problems. Because bringing up trauma, a, a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a thing here, is traumatic. I was bullied as a child. I was treated like shit as a child because I was autistic. I had a loving family. I had a mom that would fucking go to the ends of the earth for me. Who stood, who had my case brought before the Stephen Harper government. My case was brought before the Stephen Harper government to get me the fucking therapy I needed. Just for all that to come back down so this fucking autistic child could get the help they needed to function in modern society. But everything else outside of my family, I was treated like shit. I was traumatized. I was fucking, it was horrific. And you know what? I internalized that trauma. I basically started lashing out at everybody because no one was on my side outside my house. And it got to the point where I thought legitimately everyone was my enemy. Everyone was out to get me. Everything that I did when I lashed out wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault for not understanding why someone was upset about something that I said. They were just upset and calling me a dick. So fuck you. You're the bad guy. Not me. Not the person who just said the racist thing. No, I can't be the bad guy. Nope. And then I had to go through more horrible shit to realize, oh, I'm not okay. Yes, I would like to go to therapy now, please. 
And then I learned. And then I was taught. And then I was shown. That no. No. People are rightfully mad at you. You did bad things. And people called you out for them. And I had to sit with that. All because I was bullied and I took it out on everyone else. All because I was treated like shit and I took it out on everyone else. Now, am I right to be upset about being bullied? Of course. I'm allowed to be upset. It's upsetting. But you're not allowed to take that anger and rage out on everyone else that had nothing to do with it. To the weirdos and fucking losers that are screeching their goddamn heads off about female custodies, no one cares. From the bottom of our fucking hearts, no one cares. Tits and armor, dude. They exist. Please go get help. The fact that you're using 40K as a coping mechanism for your traumas and problems is not healthy. Take it from me. Someone who did the exact same thing. No one is taking away your hobby. No one is infiltrating it. Aside from the grifters that have no idea what the fuck 40K is. And no one is out to get you. The only enemies you make are the ones that you go out of your way to make. And guess what? There are just some people in this world that are not going to like you. Sucks to suck. I already have to accept that people won't watch me. Not because they hate me. Not because they don't want to be around me. Some people just don't like what I talk about. Some people aren't interested in 40k. That's fine. No one is your enemy unless you make them your enemy. And trust me. The only one who loses in that game is fucking you. Because when you make everyone your enemy, no one wants to fucking hang out with you. No one wants to play the fucking game that you claim to love. No one will ever want to play with you and your plastic toy soldiers. Because you decided that tits was the fucking hill to die on. Sorry that got really heavy. I know we said it, I know I said this was a chill stream. That's a lie. I lied to you at the door. <laughs> and I apologize for that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Warhammer 40k is a game where we can all have fun and is for everyone. Warhammer face! <laughs> I mean, 40k! <laughs> well, good news. Warhammer Fantasy is back. The old world is back. You can play the old world. Whew. Whew. No one who has already sided against the female custodies is going to watch this. I know for a fact they're not. They're stuck in their echo chamber. This is meant for everyone else. If you are going to come into 40k, fair warning. 
Everything is canon and nothing is canon. If you've come for logic and sense, sorry, you're not finding it here. It is a close to 40-year-old game with 40 years of retcons, changes, and additions. If you accept that coming in, welcome to the lazy river. <laughs> We're all relaxing and having fun here. Don't mind the guys pissing themselves on the side of the creek. They don't fucking do anything. Just come in, have fun. And who gives a shit? All right. I'm going to get going. I'm tired. <laughs> I had a long day ahead of me. I'm going to go play 30K. Yeah, I'm going to go play my Ultramarines. Um, don't forget the goal at the end of the month. A $1,000 donation total from everywhere, whether it be YouTube, Twitch, uh, Kofi, whatever. $1,000 donation. I will look at the Persona series. That is that is just how it's going to be. You're already 40% of the way there, thanks to Aramis. You're already 40% of the way there. So yeah, please remember, have fun, have a fucking laugh. It's a fun game. Don't let anyone ruin that for you. Have a good night, everybody.